trailer lifts or tow arounds provide a stable lifting elevating work platform to perform inspections or maintenance tasks that require vertical and horizontal movement above the base of the unit. The trailer lift features a rotating base and a boom arm that can be extended up, under or over objects. The basket area can on some models also be tilted or angled independently to assist in accessing a specific work area. Trailer lifts are often used for building maintenance, tree cutting, sign writing and many other uses where the access is required for short-term projects. Most trailer lifts are designed for outdoor work and will then be wind rated to 12.5 metres per second for this purpose. Decals, usually located in the basket or compliance plate, will indicate the wind rating. Check the trailer lift is approved for outdoor use and never work elevated in winds above 12.5 metres per second or 45 kilometres per hour. Trailer lifts can be battery, by energy or petrol powered. In a confined space, you may have to use an electrical power only model to prevent fumes causing a potential breathing hazard. Trailer lifts are not self-propelled. They are usually towed by a vehicle to a work site and then disconnected and set up to the correct configuration for safe elevation. The towing vehicle must have a towing capacity equal to or greater than the mass of the trailer lift. The mass can be found on the compliance plate, usually located on the drawbar. Before towing a trailer lift, it is essential that the unit is properly stowed and secured using the locking devices provided. Like all plant and equipment, a trailer lift must be maintained to the manufacturer's specifications and proof of this will be found by inspecting the maintenance records in the EWPA logbook located in the basket's yellow pouch. Trailer lifts require the operator to have a current yellow card or equivalent and requires the operator to wear the appropriate personal protection equipment or PPE which includes a safety harness and a safety helmet. To perform work over 11 metres using a boom type EWP, the operator will need to possess not only an EWPA yellow card or equivalent, but also a WP certificate of competency. A safety harness is often provided with the trailer lift and must be carefully inspected before use. There must be no visible damage, tears or excessive wear to the harness and it must be well within its expiry date. The locking clip must be in excellent condition and be of the double locking type. Never use a damaged harness or lanyard. A safety helmet must also be worn. The stability of trailer lifts is achieved through the use of outriggers to create a large footprint, unlike self-propelled EWPs such as a scissor lift that uses its weight as a stabilising mechanism. Trailer lifts are commonly used in public spaces and you must ensure a full risk assessment is carried out prior to any work commencing. You must identify the tasks to be completed, check the site for all hazards and establish effective controls to maintain a safe working environment. You must also ensure all workplace regulations applicable in your state are being followed. As part of your risk assessment, examine your operating area for any vertical obstacles such as trees and power lines, as well as examining the ground for holes and loose or uneven surfaces. Where lifting is taking place, there is always the chance that an object could fall from the basket onto anything that is below. You must ensure the area is appropriately isolated and consider moving anything that could be damaged by a falling object. Advise anyone who could enter the area of operation to seek a different access point if required. 
disconnect the trailer lift from the vehicle, making certain that the handbrake is applied, and then move or locate it to the position best suited to carry out your task. Use barricades or safety cones to mark the perimeter of the working area and ensure a safe distance from the public. Take additional precautions if the EWP is operating in the vicinity of other mobile plant. Prior to operating a trailer lift, a thorough inspection is necessary to ensure your safety and the correct functioning of the EWP. These checks include all lights are fully operational and registration plate is visible and current. Make sure the handbrake is on. That battery, oil and water levels are correct. Inspect the framework for any corrosion. Examine all switches and controls for damage and wear before use. Ensure the basket access gate and all safety signage is in clear vision. Make sure all manufacturer's operating instructions are in the basket and the logbook is present and correctly stored in the yellow pouch. Check EWP framework for any damage to cables, leaking hoses, cylinders and the slew ring mechanism which supports the lifting arm. Check all visible pivot pins for proper retention and security. Examine the outriggers to check that they are in a sound condition. Before you can operate a trailer lift, you must set up the outriggers to achieve a level working surface. The outriggers are designed to provide stability to the basket by creating a large footprint, which is achieved by manipulating the height of each outrigger collectively or individually. A bubble level or electronic level indicator will provide a visual reference to assist you. The trailer lift must be on a level surface before elevation. Outriggers must be operated to manufacturer's instructions. If the level or makeup of the ground surface exceeds the manufacturer's specifications, relocate or seek advice from a competent person. Using the outrigger ground controls, place the front legs down together first and lower the back legs to a near level position. Then, using the electronic or visual level indicator, manipulate both sets together until they are completely level. Once you have completed a thorough inspection of the trailer lift, you must sign and record your yellow card details in the operator check section at the front of the EWPA logbook. If you discover any faults or damage, you must record the details in the pink faults and actions taken section. If the damage is serious or you are uncertain about any aspect of the EWP's operation, seek advice from a competent person before using the EWP. The final section is for owner routine maintenance and safety checks. This should be read in conjunction with the manufacturer's specifications and maintenance instructions. This sets out the maintenance program details for the trailer lift and contains a specified list of safety and operational checks to guarantee a safe operating condition at all times. All elevated work platforms have ground controls and basket controls. The ground controls serve three key purposes. The ground controls are used to lower and set the outriggers that create a stable base for the EWP. To test the function of the parts of the boom arm and all other motion controls. To provide ground control if the operator is in any way impaired or a mechanical problem occurs. This is a demonstration of a manual system to bring down the basket without power. Once started, the operation of emergency stop buttons, brakes, and the lifting mechanism can be carried out from the ground control position. 
The basket controls are used only after the trailer lift has been stabilised using the ground controls. A full range of boom extensions and rotating controls are available in the basket. Both the ground controls and the basket feature emergency stop buttons. The capacity of the EWP is known as its Safe Working Load or SWL and decals on the trailer lift will clearly display the SWL of the EWP. The trailer lift, like any EWP, is designed to carry a maximum SWL, which is clearly specified. This includes any personnel, tools and materials you may wish to lift. If the weight you need to lift is greater than the SWL of the trailer lift, you will need to use a higher rated EWP or reduce the weight of the load until it is below the SWL. The basket handrails are designed to keep you safe when elevated and must not be used to carry materials and tools. You are not permitted to climb on them. You must not enter the basket without wearing a safety harness and a safety helmet. You must attach the lanyard on your safety harness to the attachment point. While elevated, use the controls for lifting or sideways movements in a fluid motion to prevent jerky movements and instability. Be aware of vertical and horizontal obstructions as well as the presence of power lines or other hazards. When you descend, carefully position the boom arm over the base to lock the units together. When finished, lift the outriggers from the back set of legs first and then the front set so as not to damage the front wheel of the trailer. Remove the key to prevent unauthorised use and push in emergency stop buttons. Reconnect the trailer lift to the vehicle mount and attach all cables and chains. Side force is the amount of horizontal force that can be applied from the basket to or from another object. Heavy weights that are dragged to a basket at height can create instability and the real possibility of overturning. To avoid this occurring, you must not exceed the stated side force of the trailer lift. Side force capacity is stated clearly on the basket, but if you have any doubts, consult a competent person. Power lines present a major hazard to operators of all elevated work platforms. Whether inside a building or outside near power lines, the operator must remain aware of any lines near their working environment. Australian Standard 2550-2002 states that the minimum distance from distribution lines should be no less than 6.4 metres from lines on poles and 10 metres from high voltage transmission lines on towers. Your trainer or the owner of the EWP will advise you of any state-based variations and on the use of spotters. An operator should stop using a trailer lift or any EWP if they deem the situation to be unsafe for any reason. Some of these reasons could include a defect with the trailer lift, excessive winds or poor weather conditions, potentially exceeding the weight capacity, maintenance problems, fumes or other contaminants, proximity to the public or power lines, or dangerous or unstable ground conditions. You must consult with a competent person if you think any hazard may result in a risk of damage or personal injury. Correctly used and maintained, a trailer lift will provide you with an effective and safe work platform from which to carry out your tasks. It is your duty as the operator to play your role in carefully examining the trailer lift prior to use.
operating it correctly, and maintaining the logbook for the benefit of all other operators and the owner.